Hello and welcome to the Games Dev Outpost. In this video, we're going to talk about Niagara and renderer bindings in Unreal 4. Now, this is kind of an advanced topic, but at the same time, it's kind of a fundamental topic. You'll see what I mean here in a little bit. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a Niagara emitter from an empty template. And then I'll give it a name, NE, whatever you want. And then I'm going to open it up. Now, before I can show you how the bindings work, there's a few things I want to set up. So in a meter update, I'm going to add a spawn rate and I'm going to set this really low to one. And then I want to come to particle spawn and I'm going to add velocity. Now you most likely got this error. And in my case, I'm going to click fix issue so we can get solve forces and velocity. And then it should appear in particle update. So for add velocity, I'm going to add 100 on the Z. What I'm looking for here is spacing in between the particles. So we'll just take a look at that real quick. And that's good. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to get rid of the sprite render because I want to start with a mesh render. And now when I add that, I'm going to change the particle mesh. So if you type in arrow, you should see S underscore arrow show up. This is the mesh that comes with the engine. And now those arrows are showing up. Cool, so we're all set up now. Now for each one of the renders, if you scroll down to the details, you should see a category called bindings. And what we're looking at here are attributes related to the renderer. And then next to them, these are parameters that are being associated with them. So there's two different ways that we can manipulate these attributes. We can change what parameter they're looking at, or we can modify the parameter. So for example, this position binding, if we come to particle spawn, and if we add a new set new or existing parameter directly, and we click on the add button, we should be able to search for position. And now that we've added that, we can leave whatever is in there by default, or we can modify this. So I'm going to change this to add vector. So now I have A and B. And now if I modify these, you can see that I'm actually moving the position of this. And if I play this, it still plays. So this is a good way that we can initialize our own position. Now as another example, there's also mesh orientation binding. And the parameter in there is particles mesh orientation. So if we come back to this set and we add again, we should be able to search for mesh orientation we can add it. And what you're going to see in here is a quaternion. Now quaternions are a form of rotation. So if you're familiar with them, this should be pretty easy. But if you don't really like working with them, you can change this. So in our drop down, if we go to dynamic links, you'll see that there's not a lot of options in here, but there is orient mesh to vector. So if we click on that, we're going to have an XYZ. But what we have available to us is a range from negative one to one. And now basically what this is, is a normalized range of 360 degrees, negative one to one. So we can both modify the parameters that these attributes are using, or we can change the parameter. Now, if we wanna add a new parameter in here, there's a few things we need to do. One of those things are, we need to know what kind of parameter the attribute takes. So for example, our position binding is a vector three or just a vector. So if we come up to our parameters window and we go to particle attributes, we'll click on this plus icon and we can add a new vector. I'm going to name mine my offset. <clears throat> and now that should show up in the dropdown, right? But no, there's another thing we need to do. We need to actually use this parameter in our emitter before it will show up. See how this says zero references? So if we drag and drop this below our previous set, this will get converted to a set. And now it shows that this is being used. If we come back to our mesh renderer now, and look at those bindings, we'll click on the position binding. It's showing up now. So now we can change it to that. So let's go take a look at our parameter. You can see that this is moving, right? It's doing, it's doing what we want. We can initialize the position. Now here's the caveat with using your own custom parameter. If you play this, you'll notice that it's not moving now. 
is not working with the add velocity or the solve forces and velocity. And there's a few reasons for this. So if we come to solve forces and velocity, and if we come up to this eyedropper and we turn on parameter reads and writes, and open those up, you'll notice that solve forces and velocity is both reading and writing particle position. So that parameter is being updated constantly. Our parameter is not being updated constantly. So if we change this to uh, add vector and we change A to our position, this is still not going to work because particles.position is being written to versus our parameter that we just made. Because it's in particle spawn, particles.position isn't actually getting updated. So you need to take this parameter and you need to put it in particle update. And now you'll see that the add velocity is working again. And we can still offset it. Now here's where things get pretty cool. So if we come back to mesh renderer and we change this, we'll just put this back to what it was, my position, and it's still working. But now we're gonna add another renderer and I'm gonna add a sprite render. And in here, I'm gonna change this particle position to my offset. And now what's interesting is we can have nested renders and we can drive those renders independent from each other or working very tightly together. Pretty cool. So this should give you a pretty good introduction to renderer bindings. There's definitely a lot here and there's definitely a lot more you can do with this. But if you thought this video was useful and it helped, please let me know by commenting down below and liking the video. Thanks guys.